Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, some fundamentals of understanding follicular recruitment, the role of AMH and antral follicle count, and some of my concepts of how I understand the relationship that exists between both of these, and sometimes answering the question, which is very simple to ask, you know, for example, we'll say, oh, the AMH is low and the antral follicle count is high. Doesn't seem to go hand in hand. So let me try and tell you a bit more and try and explain how this concept works. That is the ovary, just to put it in diagrammatic representation. Now, I'll draw a triangle and this allows us to think about it differently. And this triangle demonstrates how the ovary works. So let's take it this way. So what is the aim of the ovary? The aim of the ovary is to produce an egg, right? Now there are multiple small follicles in the ovary, which form the long-term reserve. So a part of this is measured by AMH. To simplify it, the second stage, which is called as the short-term reserve are the antral follicle counts. Now, what does this tell us? There is a relationship between the AMH and the antral follicle count. And this is to a large extent determined by genetics. So what goes down first? The first thing to decline is the AMH. And the AMH declines first. What declines next? the antral follicle declines next. So there's a relationship that is co constantly in progress. So follicles move from preantral phase into the antral phase. This is independent of gonadotrophin stimulation. You cannot change it, it's left to nature. And it varies, it varies cycle after cycle. And in younger women, you may see a same antral follicle count. One of the follicles will grow up to be the dominant follicle and the other follicles will go into atresia. So there is an invisible atresia that occurs and there is a visible atresia that occurs from the antral follicles. So as the ovary is proceeding to produce an oocyte, it goes through a continuous recruitment phenomenon and also a continuous atresia phenomenon. So again, what happens? So as women age, and again, what we think happens is if you start with a very high AMH, then until the age of 35 or so, you seem to have a steady decline of AMH and after which the AMH declines much faster. If you have a lower AMH, that decline seems to happen in a much more rapid manner. But what we don't know is how many women with low AMH will continue to hold a low AMH for a long time, and we don't know that. Some women may continue to you work with the low AMH and not go into menopause for close to 10 years. But equally, there are women who will head towards menopause within five and six years. The second thing that happens is, as your AMH declines, more follicles start getting released into the antral follicle region. So what is the role of AMH? The AMH's role is inhibitory. It holds follicles back. Why? Because you don't want to lose everything. But as women age, its inhibition role starts declining and more follicles come into the antral follicle zone. 
So the question gets asked is, will they respond better? The answer is most probably yes. And this is something which we often miss. We still look at the AMH and we say, let's stimulate the ovaries very hard because of the low AMH. And then we realize, hang on, there's been an over response. So that's one of the things which you'll have to look at is what does the AMH again tell you? It's telling you about the long-term decline. Again, what do I say? It's a savings account. This is your savings account. This is your current account. And that varies, that relationship varies between how the, the follicles work. Now, what you have to again realize is that they are small follicles. Let's change the color. If you draw a line here, follicles that are less than four millimeter are unlikely to get recruited. They're not meant for that cycle. Follicles that are more than four millimeter are more likely to get recruited in that cycle. Thus, if you don't scan some the ovary well, you'll find it difficult to see how that ovary is going to react. Now, another thing which you have to realize is that what is the destiny of the follicle? The destiny of the follicle is to die. FSH rescues some, not all, some follicles from its inevitable destiny, that is atresia, and they will start growing. And this is to a large extent called the follicular output rate. How many follicles do you output? Again, depends on age. As women age, Older women recruit fewer follicles and have more empty follicles. Younger women tend to recruit better number of follicles. Also, to a large extent, it depends on FSH threshold. And that's where it comes here. So what does this triangle help you to understand? Help you to understand what is the AMH? What is the role of AMH? Remember, AMH works up till somewhere here. What is the role of the antral follicle count? What is the relationship? Understand this concept, think about it, dream about it. And believe me, you will be able to understand why some stimulations work and why some stimulations don't. Now remember, they may, these are some of my thoughts. And as time goes by, I will tell you my thoughts and tell you how I think about certain things. And maybe this is something for you to think about. Have a good time. Thank you.